What is up, you guys? It's your boy, Mike, from Balls of Fury. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys have been following our channel and following along with our videos, then you guys know that over this past year, we produced three clutches. We hatched out 16 babies, which was absolutely awesome. And now, guys, we're actually gearing up and getting ready for our next upcoming breeding season. So usually here at Balls of Fury, we start our breeding season in late October, early November. And we're going to take you guys along in this video and kind of show you what we do to prepare our females for breeding season and basically how we breed our ball pythons and what we've had success with over the past year. So let's get into it. Look at this beautiful girl right here, our girl Bangle, looking absolutely amazing. Now our goal with breeding ball pythons is this right here, you guys, producing these amazing little baby snakes. This is a lavender albino that we produced this past year. She is absolutely gorgeous. But our goal is to produce amazing, beautiful, healthy babies. And what I want to touch on first with you guys is actually follicles. Now follicles are what the female develops inside of her that are eventually going to turn into this if everything goes according to plan. Now, before you even think about follicles, you guys, let's talk about making sure that your female ball python and your male ball python are both at the proper size to successfully breed. Let's take a look at some females over here that are just on the cusp of being able to breed or some that are already at breeding size. So this is one of our beautiful mamas that produced for us this past year. This is a beautiful leopard albino, 100% het for a clown and when we started pairing this girl up you guys she was around 1400 grams the rule of thumb for your female to be at breeding size is about 1500 grams now i'm going to show you guys another example of this but with the snake that we started a little bit on the smaller side and i'll talk to you guys about why we did so so this is another one of our beautiful proven breeders right here this is our girl zanny she is a lavender albino 100 percent het for vpi xanthic and when we started pairing her up she was around 1300 grams you guys and the reason that we started pairing her on the smaller side is because one she's always had just a very aggressive feeding response ever since we've gotten her and two we knew that she was going to continue growing as the breeding season went on. So that's why we started pairing her when she was about 1300 grams. And I'll talk to you guys about how we actually feed our ball pythons throughout the year and into the breeding season because I think it's one of the most important things that you'll need to know in order to have success breeding ball pythons. But now let's get into the males guys and talk about what your male should be at as far as breeding size. So when it comes to males, they can actually start breeding at a much smaller size than the females. This is our boy Drake right here. He is an absolute stud. He is a fire yellow belly spot nose clown. Now this boy may be ready to breed this season. He is at 500 grams right now, which is about the uh, baseline that you want your males to be at in order for them to start breeding. Now guys, I've heard crazy stories of people actually breeding males at like 390 grams or 400 grams. It, it depends on the snake, every snake is different, but I usually like my males to be about 500 grams and I honestly actually prefer them to be even bigger than that. Usually seven, 800 grams is where I like my males to be at when I'm gonna start pairing them up because eventually guys, during the breeding season, it is very common for your male ball pythons to stop feeding. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the video when we talk about how we feed our snakes when we're gearing up for breeding season and just throughout the year. And uh, we'll get back into talking about those follicles that I mentioned in the beginning. Now, the reason that follicles are so important, you guys, is because they are what are eventually going to turn into your clutch of eggs. So we're going to teach you guys two of the different ways that you can actually check to see if your female has follicles and so that you can actually either estimate or determine how big the follicles actually are. So let's get into that. Let's show you guys those two different, different techniques, and I'll talk to you guys about the technique that we actually use here at Balls of Fury. Now, if you guys don't have the funds to go out and invest in an ultrasound machine, I totally understand, but all is not lost. I'm gonna show you guys a technique that you can use without the ultrasound machine to see if your female is developing follicles. 
This technique is called palpating. Now the area of the snake's body that you wanna palpate is about the lower one third of the animal's body. This is usually where the follicles are gonna be at and where they're going to grow. So when you palpate your snake, guys, what I like to do is, is I like to take their tub and just unlock the front of it. If you're using a rack system, you can kind of just push it halfway in. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically lift the, the lid kind of just let your your female kind of just rest its body there and you're basically just going to let her hang like this you're going to apply some pressure to that lower one third of her body and you're just going to let her crawl through your hands and crawl right back into the enclosure you're putting a very very light amount of pressure while doing this you guys now to determine or estimate the size in which the follicles are at when you're palpating is if you feel some very small little bumpy things, usually they are about 12 millimeters when they're the size of a pea. Now, when they reach about 20 millimeters, they should feel like the size of a golf ball or a ping pong ball. And when they get to 30 millimeters, they should start to feel like the size of a chicken egg. And then once your female ovulates and they reach above 40 or 50 millimeters, they should actually start to feel like a python egg. So that is palpation, you guys. That's basically how you do it. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am not the best at this technique. That's why I went out and invested in an ultrasound machine. And I'll explain to you guys how we do that and also how big of a game changer the ultrasound machine is. So the next technique I wanted to talk to you guys about is ultrasounding. Now, this is the technique that we use at Balls of Fury to determine what size the follicles are at within the female ball python. Over here, we got our whole entire ultrasound machine. This is a pretty basic one. We got the machine itself. We've got our probe. Now, this is a rounded probe, you guys. I would recommend getting the linear probe. I should have did more research when I was getting my ultrasound machine, but for now, this is what we have and it works fine, but the linear one is a little bit easier to use on your snake. But we've got that, we've got our ultrasound gel, and now all we need is our snake so we can ultrasound the snake and see what follicles they're at. We're actually gonna ultrasound two snakes in this video, you guys, because we got two snakes that have currently been pairing up with males. We wanna see how their follicles are developing and what size they are at, if they're close to an ovulation or if they're still building. So we got our beautiful female right over here, you guys. We're gonna get ready to ultrasound her. Now, the area that you wanna ultrasound is the same area that we talked about in the palpating section. You wanna ultrasound that lower one third of the snake's body. That's where the follicles will be. And so let's get right into it, you guys. We're gonna get our ultrasound probe ready. We're gonna put some gel on there too. Now you guys need the gel. Without the gel, you will not be able to see anything within the snake. The gel is what helps to produce the image through the ultrasound machine. And we'll go ahead and we'll ultrasound this beautiful female. And now you wanna go lateral to the spine, you guys, when you're ultrasounding the females. That's for usually how you're gonna be able to see the eggs in there. And then we'll go ahead and check if this girl is at, got some follicles. She definitely has some follicles in there. And boom. We're gonna freeze the image like that, as you guys can see on the ultrasound machine right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a measurement. So as you guys can see right here on the machine, we have our follicle right here. This is a big follicle. This girl's been pairing up with our clown male. She's been growing follicles for a bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this distance button right here, and we're gonna record the distance of the top to bottom and side to side of this follicle. So let's go ahead, go to the top. Right about there. So we've got 24 millimeters from top to bottom, and then we're gonna do side to side, you guys. Wow, we got some really nice growth here, you guys. So from top to bottom, she is at 24 millimeters, and from side to side, she is at 41.6 millimeters. Now, this girl is still feeding, so I don't think she is ovulated yet, but she is definitely close to an ovulation, which we'll talk about later in the video. 
but these are the follicles on this girl. Let's go ahead and ultrasound one more girl so you guys can go ahead and see what her follicles are looking like. So we got the other snake we're gonna ultrasound now, you guys. This is our girl, Mona Lisa, right here. She is a GHI Hypo Spider Ball Python. And again, you guys, we're gonna be ultrasounding that lower one third of the snake's body. Now this girl can be a little bit feisty, so hopefully she won't take a pop at me. But we're gonna go ahead and ultrasound that lower one third. Gonna get our machine all ready. We're gonna go ahead and put that gel on there. And we're gonna see what this girl's follicles are at and if they have grown. Now she's been pairing up with our leopard yellow belly double head hypo pied. Now let's go ahead and get an, a reading on this girl. See if she's got some follicle growth. Let me tell you guys, when they start moving around, it starts getting very difficult to ultrasound them. So just bear with me. Give me one minute to find a nice follicle here so we can get a nice little measurement on this girl. And again, you're going lateral to the spine on the snake. Uh, and sometimes too, guys, with the smaller follicles, they are much harder to see. But hopefully we get a decent sized follicle to show you guys. Sorry guys, I had to put some more gel on the probe because we couldn't get a reading right off the rip. But hopefully this time we can get one. Beautiful. So we got our follicle right up on the screen, you guys, as you can see right here, this circular little looking thing. So we'll go ahead and get a measurement on that right now. So like we did the last time, you guys, we're going to go ahead and measure this follicle right here. And it looks like the follicle got a little bit smaller from the last time. So that's not really a great sign. She could possibly be reabsorbing these follicles which uh, means that she will not produce eggs. But let's kind of get a, a reading. So we got 16.8 millimeters from top to bottom. And then we're gonna do side to side here. And like I said, you guys, those smaller follicles, they can be very hard to see on the ultrasound machine, but we got one right here. So we got 16.8 from top to bottom and 18.4 from side to side. So the follicles, they definitely decreased a little bit in size since the last time that I ultrasounded this girl. However, she still has some decent sized follicles, you guys. So I'll keep putting that male in there. Next month, we'll check to see if they got a little bit bigger. But in the meantime, we're just gonna keep feeding her, keep her growing, keep putting that male in there and hope for the best. But this is the ultrasounding technique, you guys. I highly recommend going out and getting an ultrasound machine if you plan to breed ball pythons. It's definitely a game changer. As you guys can see, you can get really accurate readings and it really can help you throughout the breeding season with your females. And it can also save some energy on your males because the ultrasound machine gives you the opportunity to actually plan when you're going to put your male in with your female. So let's get into the next topic, which are going to be some things that actually will stimulate follicle growth within your females. Since we're talking about follicles and we're gearing up for our next breeding season here, what we're gonna do at the end of this month or the first week of November is we're actually gonna go through all of our females who are at breeding size or close to being at breeding size and we're gonna ultrasound them. This will be our first initial reading on these females to see if they have any follicles and we can see what size those follicles are at. Now here at Balls of Fury, I typically like to pair my females up with males when they are at about 12 to 15 millimeter follicle size. Now we're gonna talk about some of the things you guys can actually do and some of the things that we implement here that will actually stimulate the growth of follicles. It's really, really good stuff you guys and we've had a lot of success implementing these practices. So I definitely wanna share it with you and we'll get right into it. But look at how awesome our girl Dior is looking. This is one of those females who is gonna be ready to breed this season. She's sitting at about 1,250 grams. 
but man, she's gonna keep putting on size. And at the end of this month, we're gonna check her to see if she's got some follicles. But let's talk about what you can do to stimulate follicle growth. Now, the first thing that I'll start doing to prepare our snakes for the upcoming breeding season and to start stimulating that follicle growth within our females is I will actually start cooling down the temperature of the snake room. Throughout the year, you guys, we keep the daytime ambient temperature in the snake room at about 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And during the summertime, sometimes at night, it'll drop down to maybe 76, but not much cooler than that. Within the next few weeks or at the beginning of the next month, what I actually will start doing is I will start dropping the temperature down at nighttime to about 70 degrees. Now, what I noticed happens when I do this is that it starts stimulating that follicle growth within your females, but also it starts getting both the males and the females in the mood to breed. Now, the reason for this is, is because in Africa, ball pythons typically breed during the raining season. And during this time of year in Africa, the temperatures will naturally decrease at nighttime. So this will actually trigger the ball pythons to start breeding. Now, as far as their hot spots, I always keep that at about 89 to 90 degrees. That will not change you guys, but I will be dropping the temperature down at nighttime. And even during the daytime, you guys, during the breeding season, I like to keep things on the cooler side. I'll probably stay more towards the 78 degree ambient temperature. And the reason for this is because too much heat can actually kill sperm. And this will lead to fertility issues. Now, from my experience of the past breeding season, by keeping this room a little bit cooler while breeding our snakes, we had a 100% fertility rate, which is freaking awesome. And I want to keep that up, you guys. So I definitely recommend keeping your temperatures cooler during that breeding season. And also, guys, by doing that, we had 100% hatch rate. We had no eggs go bad. So I really believe in this technique of cooling. But this is something that some people do and some people don't do. It's up to you. But I'm just speaking from my experience and from what I've seen and what I've had success with. So I wanted to share that with you guys. But next, we'll talk about something really important that I believe is a great follicle stimulator for your females. Now, something that is really important when it comes to keeping ball pythons and breeding ball pythons is feeding. Now, what we're going to talk about next, you guys, is called food cycling. Look at our boy Reaper right here. Such an absolutely beautiful snake. He's actually in the process of pairing up with the snake right now. Hopefully he'll become a dad, but let's take a look at some of our snakes actually feeding and talk about what food cycling actually is. And it's not only important for your females, you guys, but it's also important for your male snakes like our boy Reaper here. So let's talk about why it's important for follicle stimulation within your females and why it's important for your males as well. So food cycling is something that we pretty much do all year round, you guys. Basically, during the summer months, what we do is we take our female ball pythons and we put them on a maintenance diet. Basically, the maintenance diet is what they would normally be getting if you kept them as a pet. Just an appropriate sized meal every 7 to 10 days. And then once those winter months hit, you guys, and we get into the breeding season, we start power feeding these females right here. I mean, sometimes they'll get like two, three rats at a shot really really just feed them as much as they want and that really seems to stimulate follicle growth and as you guys can see our girl lala smashing a small rat right here this is one of those girls that potentially might be up to size for us this year so i'm really excited to see this girl grow and she's actually going to be going down to darius very soon he's going to be getting this female right here to pair her with his male young boy now that's basically how we food cycle our females you guys let's check out a male and actually talk about what we do for our male ball pythons now guys, when it comes to the males, we actually do the opposite with food cycling. We will actually give these guys a buffet of rodents during the summertime. We'll either feed them multiple rats at one sitting or we'll start feeding them smaller meals more frequently. Now, basically the reason why we do food cycling the opposite way around when it comes to the boys 
is because during the breeding season, it is very common for males to stop feeding you guys. So during those breeding months, we're actually maintain feeding the boys, giving them basically just what they would normally get as a pet, just a meal every week or every 10 days. And this is our boy Future, you guys. He's doing absolutely awesome, just crushing it. But that's basically how we food cycle the males, you guys. Pretty much the same thing with the females, just the opposite time of year. But it's really important during those summer months to make sure that you get some good size on your males going into the breeding season. Because let me tell you guys, they will go off of food. And another trick that we use, guys, too, is if we have a male ball python who's currently breeding for us, if he stops taking rats, we'll actually try offering him mice. And most of the times, you guys, they will take mice. So sometimes we will actually feed them mice during the breeding season. But look at that boy Future taking down yet another meal. He's been killing it here. Hopefully he'll be ready to breed within the next year or so. We don't have too many of his girlfriends up to size yet, but they might be later this year. So we're just going to keep feeding this boy well, getting that good size on him. And hopefully his girlfriends will be ready to go soon. Now, food cycling is something I definitely recommend you guys doing. We've had a lot of success with it here. And another reason why it's really important to start really feeding those females well during the breeding season is because you want to think like a snake, you guys. If there's a surplus of food for your female snake, she's going to say to herself, hey, there's a surplus of food here for me. There must be a surplus of food for my future babies. Let me go ahead and produce some offspring. So that's why I really love that food cycling technique, you guys. And I feel like it's such a vital part to having success when you're breeding your ball pythons. Now, the final thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys regarding follicle growth and stimulating the growth of follicles is actually copulation or for the layman, snake sex. Now, snake sex is a very important part of this, you guys. It is what is actually going to fertilize those eggs and lead to a clutch of eggs. Let's check out some snakes that were actually locked up and we'll talk a little bit about copulation. Now, this is always an amazing sight to see when you open up that tub and you see your snakes locked up. This is called a snake lock, you guys, also known as copulation and also known as snake sex. Now, as you can see, the male has his tail wrapped underneath the females and these guys could stay locked like this for days. So it's best to leave the snakes alone, let them finish doing their thing and then separate them after you've gotten that confirmed lock and they've unlocked with each other. Now, when you guys are letting your snakes take a break from each other, that's the time you want to get those meals in. You could pair these guys up once a month from the date that you confirmed the lock. Or like we like to do here, I like to pair the snakes up every 10 days or even sometimes one time a week because I'm a firm believer that by just having a male in there with the female, this will stimulate follicle growth in your female snake. Since we talked about all of the things you guys can start doing to start promoting that follicle growth within your females, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the actual signs that you should look for to see if your female is not only building follicles, but is heading towards an ovulation. Now, let's say that you've been ultrasounding or palpating and you have an idea that she has follicles, you've been food cycling like we talked about, and you've gotten some confirmed copulations or confirmed snake locks like we've been talking about. Now what you wanna do is start observing those females and looking for these signs. Now one of the earliest signs that you guys wanna look for when it comes to breeding your snakes and that you wanna observe in your female is if you notice the female is starting to favor the cool side of the tub or is even bowl wrapping like this female over here, this is a great sign that is pointing to them actually building follicles and those follicles are actually growing. Now, the reason that the female is bowl wrapping or favoring the cool side of the tub is because she's actually cooling down her body temperature. And like I talked about earlier in the video, it's extremely important for this female to stay at a comfortable temperature because too much heat will lead to fertility issues within that clutch of eggs. So the female will definitely start favoring that cool side of the tub. And this is one of the first positive signs that you wanna look for. Also, you guys might see your female snake laying inverted like this. 
this is another way of that snake actually controlling its body temperature and getting those follicles or eggs into a, a comfortable position where they're not too hot. Now let's fast forward a little bit down the road, you guys. Let's say that you've been ultrasounding or palpating your snakes and you have an idea that their follicles are getting really, really big, almost maybe around the 30 millimeter mark or more. What you may start to notice next is that that female is actually starting to refuse food. Now this is a really good sign, you guys, and this is the time of year where you want your females to start refusing food. Now that they started refusing that food, you guys, this is a sign that they're starting to put all their energy towards egg production and they are heading towards an ovulation really soon. So if you see those follicles getting really big or you feel them getting really big by palpating and your female stops feeding, this is a really good sign, you guys. So your female snake has stopped feeding, you guys, and now it looks like she ate a giant meal. This is what we call the ovulation, and this is the most awesome thing you guys can see because it's guaranteeing that you are getting a clutch of eggs. We'll take a look at some of the ovulations that we've had here at Balls of Fury so you guys can actually get an idea of what they look like and so you guys can kind of see it once your snakes go through this process. I love seeing an ovulation, you guys. Now, let's say that your female has been displaying all those signs we talked about. She's been off of food for a while, and now all of a sudden you look at her and you see this gigantic lump in the lower one-third of her body. This is the ovulation, and it's one of the most exciting things to see because you know you're getting a clutch of eggs when you see that. So that's really what you're looking for, you guys, is that nice big swell like that. And this girl went on to give us six beautiful, healthy eggs absolutely awesome but that is what the ovulation will look like you guys now once you guys have spotted that ovulation you'll notice that your snake will start going through a shed process we call this shed the pre-lay shed once that snake sheds its skin you can start your countdown about 30 days after the snake goes through this shed you guys will get that beautiful clutch of eggs also after the snake sheds its skin you guys might start to notice that your snake is spending a lot of time on the warmer side of the cage. This is where they're actually nesting and gestating those eggs, getting them ready to be laid. Now, as you guys can see over here, this is one of our female going through those pre-lay sheds, and she actually laid her eggs about 25 days after going through that shed. So sometimes they lay them a little bit earlier, and sometimes they lay them a little bit later, but just know that 30 is about the benchmark where you should start expecting eggs. And it's such an amazing feeling seeing your beautiful ball python wrapped around a nice healthy clutch of eggs. Now the best part about breeding ball pythons, you guys, is this right here. These beautiful little hatchlings that you end up creating with the help of your snakes. It's just absolutely amazing. One of the most rewarding, this guy's feisty, whoa. This guy is trying to take pops at me, as you can see. Anyways, like I was saying, you guys, this is the main goal of breeding ball pythons, getting these amazing hatchlings. One of the most rewarding things that I've done in my life, you guys. And the best part about it is that it always gives you something to look forward to. Now we get to take this beautiful little hatchling that we produced and we get to use him in the future to create something even more amazing. And I better put this guy back before he tries to take another shot at me, you guys. But man, what a feisty little baby. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope I was able to help you guys, give you some tips out there. Also, please feel free to comment any tips that you guys want to give us when it comes to breeding your snakes, anything you've tried that has worked. I'd really love to hear about it. Also, can you guys go ahead, smash that like button, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Shout out to the recessive gang, Darius, AJ, and Dre. Keep doing your thing, you guys. I will be back to talk to you guys soon. Peace.